welcome back. In the last few videos, we saw how to use linear models. So the models that we had been using were because we were dealing with steady state heat conduction without heat addition. So we had d square t dx square equal to zero. So our forward model, which was from physics, said that the temperature would be of the form a constant plus some other constant multiplied by x. Okay. Now let's say we have heat addition. And let's say constant heat addition. So this would give us something like d square t dx square is some heat addition. So you would have a heat source term on the right hand side. So the solution to this invariably is going to be a quadratic. So something like w0 plus w1x plus w2x square. Okay. So you can imagine a case very similar to the one that we have done where you have a slab, uh, some thermocouples somewhere in the middle, but you have heat addition. And in fact, we have given one such problem within the uh, assignment for this week. So if we have something of that sort and we have a similar problem to the one above, like I give you the temperatures and I ask you to find out what this heat addition is or what the conductivity is, et cetera, et cetera. Then how would you go ahead and uh, proceed with that? As it turns out, you need what I am going to call right now quadratic regression. More specifically, we will see next week that all these are just special cases of linear regression. In fact, you might probably suspect that as I do this problem that this looks just like linear regression. But let us start with this model. So we are going to say, let's say we have a case, not just the slab, but some case where we have w0 plus w1x plus w2x square. The rest of the process remains the same in that we still make a table. So we have serial number, we have x, we have y, and then we have y hat. And uh, maybe some of you might prefer to even put an extra column for x square. Okay, so that's just calculated. So once we do that, we basically have to calculate y hat and we have to calculate the corresponding error, which is y minus y hat. And then we calculate j, just like above before, the cost function is still the same thing. Whatever be the prediction, sum up half of y minus y hat square. You might notice that sometimes I keep the m at the bottom and sometimes I don't. Really speaking, it's more out of forgetfulness rather than anything else. Generally, it is a good idea to take mean square error. So the error still remains the same. Okay, so. The mean square error is the error that we are trying to minimize. Okay, so our problem now becomes if you want the best coefficients, find out w0, w1, and w2, which minimize j. Okay. Now, so far, as you can see, there is not much change in the entire process. So now j is half i pi i minus y hat i square this we are going to call sigma j i just like before where j i was half of y i minus y i hat square but we are going to set del j del w not equal to zero del j del w1 equal to 0 and del j del w2 equal to 0. And you will see that calculating these is not very different from what we did before. Remember del j del w0 or let's say if I do del j i del w0, we will simply get del j i del w0 multiplied, sorry, del j i del w del y hat into del y hat del w naught. This is how we calculated in the first video. 
So you can check that out. Del Y hat del W1 and del J I del Y hat del Y hat del W2. You will notice that these terms, the del J I del Y hat terms are exactly the same. And all these are simply y i hat minus y i. Okay, so this we had done in the previous videos as well. Now, the only thing that changes now is these terms. Now, recall y hat is w0 plus w1x plus w2x square. So, these derivatives now become straightforward. Del y hat, del w0 is simply 1. Del y hat del w1 is now x and del y hat del w2 is x square. Okay. So now if we look at these three equations, we can now rewrite them in the following form. Del j del w0 equal to 0 would mean that sigma y i minus y hat i. This is multiplied by 1. So this is equal to 0. i equal to 1 to m. We had that 1 over m. So I will retain it. Similarly, del j del w 1 equal to 0 would mean 1 over m sigma i equal to 1 to m y i minus y hat i. Now this is weighted by x i. You might remember that these two equations are the same as the linear regression equations. Nothing really changes. Except now y hat actually has a quadratic term also. As we will see, that affects the equation slightly. Okay, So now the third equation is del j del w2 equal to 0. So this will give us 1 over m sigma i equal to 1 to m y i minus y hat i. Now, instead of x i, you are now going to get x i square equal to 0. So, let us able label these equations as 1, 2 and 3 and now we can expand them. We now know that uh, y hat is w0 plus w1 x i plus w2 x i square. So if we plug that in, okay, so let's say in this equation. So I'm just going to expand equation three and uh, I let as a mild exercise for you to expand equations one and two. So if we expand equation three, this one over m, and i equal to 1 to m. I am going to flip the sign just so that it is easier to write because I am just taking a negative of this equation and it will still stay the same. So you are going to have w0 plus w1xi plus w2xi square minus yi times xi square equal to 0. In fact, in this whole case, I really should have put because of the derivative in each case, the derivative is y hat i minus y i. So, you know, that minus is there anyway. Okay. So, if we come here, we see the first term is w0 xi square divided by m. So, I can now write it as before as w0 x square average. The next term says w1 x cube average that is this term w1 xi into xi square and the third term is w2 x power 4 average and this whole thing can be taken to the right hand side and written as x square y average. Okay. So I am going to call this equation 6. Now equation 4 will correspond to this and I am going to write that down directly. 
So equation four is W zero plus W one X bar plus W two X square bar equal to Y bar. This is equation four. And equation five is W zero X bar plus W one X square bar plus W two X cube bar equal to X Y bar equation five. And let's just copy equation six and put it here. Okay. This is equation six. Now the way this helps, and all of you can probably see the pattern at this point in a straightforward fashion. The first equation says the same thing that it did in linear regression. That is the prediction at the average location should be the average of the predictions. Okay, so this, this equation has exactly the same meaning as linear regression. Now notice all that is happening is in each equation an extra x is introduced. Okay, so this becomes x bar, this becomes x square bar, this instead of x becomes x square, this becomes x cube, x square becomes x cube, x bar 4, y becomes x y and then x square y. So this now is a system of three equations in three unknowns. What are the unknowns? The unknowns are W0, W1 and W2. And just like last time, you now have to calculate these extra terms. Uh, you, we did calculate x square bar. But apart from that, you need x cube bar, you need x square y bar, you need x power 4 bar, etc. So we will leave this as an exercise for you. Um, there is no simple compact formula here. There is a formula which you can derive, but it's kind of messy. So in any quadratic regression problem, so set up the equations. And solve. For W0, W1, W2, just like we solved for W0 and W1 in linear regression. So, this is a simple solution. You can do it either by cross elimination or by Kramer's rule or whichever method you are familiar with. But nonetheless, it requires the solution of a 3 by 3 system. Now, um, what we have done now is repeat exactly the same process that we did for linear regression and get here. Now, you should be able to do in case. Let's say my right hand side here was not a constant, but actually a, a linear function. If it is a linear function, then your hypothesis function or your forward model would have a cube. So you would add an additional term and there will be four equations and four unknowns, so on and so forth. So quadratic regression can easily be extended to polynomial regression. Okay, but we will see this formally in the next week. So intuitively, you can see that the same process that applies to a linear regression actually applies to quadratic polynomial. So there are two questions. How do we sort of make this without uh, this mess of writing the equations, which we'll see next week, how to automatically generate that matrix. And second thing is, are there other problems which can be solved by the same procedure? So we will look at a series of linearizable problems in the next week. Okay, so please do do the assignment if you're taking this course for credit. Thank you.